Hi, I'm Big Ben and welcome to this week's episode of Equip Tips, where we're going to be talking all about white balance. Let's start, first start off by talking about white balance and what it is. When we're talking about white balance, we're talking about what is actually being shown as white in our photograph. If we have a white piece of paper, a white wall, a bride's white wedding dress, in our photograph we want it to actually appear white and not red, not green, or especially not blue. So what we're going to do is, is when we're talking about white balance, we're talking about the Kelvin scale. Some of you might have heard of this. Don't be afraid of it. The Kelvin scale is a scale that runs the spectrum of visible light from red to blue. And what we're talking about is varying degrees of temperature. The lower the temperature a light source is giving us, we say it's more redder or yellow. And the higher the temperature, meaning the hotter it is, the actually bluer it's going to get. Think about when you're a kid and playing with matches safely with the confines of adult supervision. And remember, the hotter a flame is, it gets bluer. Think of a natural gas flame. It's a really hot flame, so it burns blue. Think about a campfire. You're sitting there roasting your marshmallows, sharing some laughs with some buddies, and you get in that trance down at the fire, and you look down, and you see that the embers close to where the fire's starting can even be blue at times, meaning it's a hotter temperature. Well, when we're talking about the Kelvin scale, and specifically in regards to photography, take, for instance, a candlelight, a uh, standard inside light bulb, what we call an incandescent bulb, or something that is low in, low in color temperature, meaning that it's going to be given off a red or an orange or a glow. We go outside, and it's not that yellow or red, is it? It's more of a white or a blue light. And that's right in the middle of the spectrum, which is daylight, and daylight's rated at about 52 to 5600 degrees Kelvin. As we move up in the chart and get higher in degrees, the color gets more blue, right? So if we go to very high altitudes, we could even be around 10,000. Most computer monitors are around 6,500. Tungsten lights, which is one of those white balance settings we'll talk about, is right around 3,200 and decrease Kelvin. So basically, we're, all we're talking about is the apparent color that an object is giving, assuming it's coming from a black source. Now, when we're talking about photography, we gotta kinda flip this around and think of it in an opposite way. To further demonstrate talking about Kelvin and temperatures of white balance, we're gonna be talking about what it means when we have a cool light. Let's say we're outside and the light source is really blue, such as maybe on a cloudy day or such as a light source that is extremely blue in temperature. What we have to do, since we are cold and blue in our cameras, we actually have to do the opposite of what you're thinking, meaning since the picture looks blue, it looks cold, we have to add warmth to the scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our white balance so it gets warmer by turning up the heat in our degrees. So as you can see is what's happening right now. The snow's going away and I'm going to slowly get warmer here to where we have an appropriate white balance. Say like I got a, a light source that's around 8000K, which is pretty blue. I'm now going to counter that in my camera by turning up my white balance to match that. Now that we've warmed up a bit, I've got my conversation hat on and my geriatric goggles. And now we can go into about, well, what if we're shooting somewhere and our picture looks really blue? Meaning we've got a hot light source coming in at us meaning it's higher on the table. So we have something that's really blue, either a blue light, say like a tungsten light. We have a tungsten light hitting us. So how are we going to balance that out with our white balance? Well, we're simply going to adjust our white balance in the opposite direction to line it up. Now, how do we take white balances? There's a couple of things you can do. Our cameras have a built-in auto white balance, which each time you take a metering, it's going to go ahead and configure what that's going to be to make whatever the lightest part of the frame be white. The problem is with that that it doesn't have consistency. Unless you're at a wedding or something where you don't have time to get a white balance, you're at a club doing you know event photography, where you don't have the time, you need to shoot from the hip, that's a really good idea. However, there is some other options out there when getting a custom white balance. Probably my favorite that I use a lot is my bling here. 
It comes from a company named Expo Disc, and this simply acts as an incident. You just put your camera to take a custom white balance. Please see your camera's manual to figure out how to do that. And you're going to take that, hold it in front of that, point it at your light source. Remember, the color temperature is coming from the light source. And when you do that, it's going to go ahead and take a metering and make a custom white balance for you. Basically, all this Expo disc does, it takes all that light, refracts and diffuses it through this kaleidoscope type pattern, and projects that color of whatever it's going to be to that gray. So your, so your camera can go ahead and take a reading of what it thinks white's going to be. These work great when you have time to do it, and they come in various diameters. And the big thing to remember when getting one of these is to get one that fits the largest lens you have as far as the diameter. If I get one this large and I have a lens that's bigger than this, it obviously isn't going to cover the entire lens, and that's going to cause lots of problems. So instead of going and buying one of these for each lens you own, go ahead and buy the largest one you can in diameter so it can fit all your cameras. It's okay if it overlaps. You just want to make sure you got equal coverage over the glass of the lens. The other option that we have is actually going into our cameras and setting a custom Kelvin degree, which you can do by going into your white balance. And you'll see the numbers 5000K, 4700K, 4500K. And go ahead and tink with that, tinker around with that until you get it. The best way to set a white balance is to know the temperature of the light that is being cast upon your subject. If you're out in the midday sunlight, you know you're going to be setting your camera somewhere between 5 and 6000K. If I'm shooting in a tungsten situation where I've got tungsten lights, I'm probably going to be cranking my white balance over to the tungsten end of the spectrum, which is around 3200K, and so forth. If I'm shooting under candlelight, I'm even going to go the opposite way and even go further on the spectrum. The best thing to do is to... Sh I like to shoot in RAW because it allows us to adjust the white balance in post-production. Versus if you were a JPEG shooter, and not to stir any controversy because there's a lot of it when we talk about RAW versus JPEG, you are stuck with the white balance you have. So make sure when you are shooting JPEG, you nail your white balance right. Personally, I tend to shoot everything around 5000K regardless of what lighting situation I have because then in post I can adjust that accordingly. What I pay attention to when I am taking a white balance shooting a portrait subject is that I usually try to look at the skin tones and make sure that they're going to look appropriate. As a wedding photographer, I'm making sure that dress is white and not kind of a pale yellow or even a, a cold blue. We want it right down the middle, as neutral as possible, because in post-production, in my workflow, I'm usually going to add a little bit of curves. I'm going to usually do a little bit of work on them to adjust the contrast and color. So for me, I shoot in RAW. I take a custom white balance through with my Expo disc or setting a custom Kelvin temperature in my camera and then I'm able to adjust it in post accordingly. How do we white balance our camera so our photo is going to look neutral? We want the white in our photo to actually look white. We don't want them to look, we don't always want them to look warmer, we don't always want them to look colder. There's a lot of times where obviously we are going to want stuff warmer if we're doing a family portrait. We want it to be warm and inviting. You know, we can make it warmer. If we're doing something emotional or we want it to be cold and dark, we can make it cooler. But just for basics, let's talk about how we get a custom white balance using the tools that we have built into our camera, as well as some of the other options out there about getting a custom white balance. Well, our, all our cameras have an auto white balance function. This is the spray and pray function. It's fully automatic. Your camera's going to take a metered reading of the scene, of the tones in the scene, and it's going to guesstimate what a neutral white balance would be. Well, the problem is with that, every time we hold down the shutter and take another picture of whatever we might be doing, it's going to give us a slightly different color temperature. Well, say like I shot 100 photos that day at a wedding, well, I'm going to have a problem because each one of those photos is going to have a slightly different white balance depending on the apparent light source that is illuminating that subject and its corresponding color temperature, whether it be really, really warm, such as an incandescent candlelight bulb, 
or if we're outside and it's a lot brighter and whiter and even bluer such as daylight you know around 5600 degrees so auto white balance is one of those things you want to reserve when you are shooting off the hip and you don't have time to get a custom white balance or you're in one of those situations where you have so many mixed light sources of different temperatures you're not quite sure where to go the other options that we have is taking a custom white balance and most modern DSLRs nowadays allow us to take a custom white balance you have your presets such as daylight fluorescent tungsten which is obviously blue remember our, our, our temperature and even uh, even cloudy when we're shooting on a cloudy day built into our camera along with our presets a lot of the cameras will actually have a preset for the Kelvin temperature so I can go in and simply dial in the actual degrees that I want the overall picture to be so if I am inside shooting around tungsten lights say like I'm making a movie and I've got I don't got daylight I've got tungsten colors which obviously is going to be a lot lower temperature I can go in and set my white balance to 3200 Kelvin degrees and that's great because you can tweak it however you want it now a word of thought is is that uh, coming back to the whole raw versus JPEG controversy is that with a raw image remember in post-production whether it be Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever program you might use you can then adjust your white balance afterward versus in JPEG what you get is what you get so make sure if you're shooting JPEG that you have your white balance set before you start snapping away at pictures because you do not have the abilities of camera raw or at least you don't have the abilities of changing that white balance with actually degrading the image and saving it on top of itself. So with that, there is some new technology out there that I'm happy to talk about. And this also comes from the company x -Rite, who makes fine monitor calibration products as well as printer calibration. And this is the x -Rite Color Checker. And what's great about this is that you can have your model or subject, pretend I'm a you know pretty girl sitting here, <laughs> and you can have her hold this and you can either take a custom white balance using the white card here and what's even better is that you can just take a snapshot of this pull it into Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever editing program you might use uh, this comes with a software that will actually build a profile mapping out each of these colors and so on this side here you notice you've got kind of some cooler tones and you've got some warmer tones so say like I wanted to take a white balance that isn't exactly neutral say like I'm taking pictures of a, of a newborn baby and I want it to be slightly warmer than a perfect white balance I want those whites to look slightly warmer well with this you can actually pull a custom white balance that is either a little bit warmer or a little bit colder and so that's what's really great about this and not only that but it actually builds a custom camera profile for every shot or session that you take and so these are about a hundred dollars and they are pretty amazing I have not had the opportunity to own one yet but I have shot with one and they're pretty cool this is definitely a good investment for all you pixel peepers out there who are worried about color calibration and and getting your colors perfect as for me though I, I like my expo disc and I like to shoot in a, a custom Kelvin temperature. I always shoot raw, so I have that liberty of adjusting it in post-production. So in closing for this week's equip tip, remember that setting a custom white balance is equally, import, is equally as important as getting your exposure right. Remember that the Kelvin scale isn't that hard to read. Just remember, just think back to when you were a pyro as a kid and playing with matches that the bluer the flame, the higher the degree. The redder the flame, the lower temperature of the degree. And then when we put that into our camera, we just do the opposite of that. We're just going to counter that to, to balance out your whites. With that, I'm Big Ben with Framed Equip Tips, and we will see you next week.